<clears throat> so here we are in uh, Empire of the Sun. This is the beginning of 1943. Yeah, remember to look through the the uh, camera. I've gotten kind of sloppy with that, I think, with this game. All right, it keeps me from panning too quickly and a lot of other things. Okay, so. Nothing much has changed. I've taken uh, new reinforcements. The uh, U.S. didn't lose anything to what they're getting. But they're going to lose another point of national will this turn, no matter what. They don't have a carrier on the board. They couldn't, they, they didn't get one as a reinforcement, and they didn't get any replacement points to build one with. Uh, next turn, they get a replacement point so they can put one. But they'll have, uh, I think, a light carrier counts. I'm not, I'm not absolutely certain of this. There are no U.S. carrier units, so I would guess the light carrier counts. For that. Uh, but they're definitely pressed to the point of probably being very close to accepting something less than unconditional surrender. Now, right now. Japan doesn't look that terribly bad off, uh, but as the economy, as the U.S. economy starts cranking out more and more ships, well, clearly that's not going to last. Uh, Japanese might want to be considering, see, they're down to a barrier on the China side, but... The Chinese can't defeat Japan in China. So I think the Japanese will upgrade one. Now here's the question. Do they want to upgrade? I think a nine is pretty potent here. So what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade this guy over in Saigon. Because he might be useful too. And we're just we're we're trimming the numbers uh, and the chances of any Japanese offensive ever succeeding. But that's not going to happen unless, at the very least, I can close uh, uh, the Burma the Burma Road here. So we're gonna keep pulling troops out of China and throwing them into that Burma theater. Because that seems to be one of the key points here. The English reinforcements all showed up here. Got some additional army units. Didn't have room for additional units here, which is a shame. It may mean we lose Rangoon. The Japanese would be at six cards, or at seven cards, because you get to round up on their strategic Thing. They have uh, 13 points, uh, 13 special locations. Well, that counts as seven. But once again, and probably every turn from now on, pretty much, the U.S. managed to sink uh, some of their transport. So now they're down to only four. They used a barge card for an offensive. And they're beginning to kind of regret that because they may be in the position where they cannot transfer troops back and forth. and uh, At least with the barge card, they could get this thing into Japan or something. Uh, you know, make, make the invasion a little more expensive. But that's where we're at. And I don't know how, you know, I don't know how much of an effort I'm willing to really expend on that this early when things aren't that risky. What I might expend on is moving this sucker down to where I want the extra forces but okay all right let's get started okay so played a couple of actions out the uh, US started things off with book attack taking this resource hex that's not really helping them they need those five named locations but they've got a card that'll help them do that basically if they take this they get five named locations uh, for free. So they want to hold off till towards the end of the turn to take that. 
but they also want to improve their strategic position and this attack seems to be a good way for doing that. However, then the uh, Japanese created an inner service rivalry which is going to make life a little bit more difficult there, but the US already has enough of a foothold here, they can use just marines and navy and air power to uh, to take uh, an island, I think, if they get good surprise. Uh, they don't have a good response for it. They played their uh, kicker card, the war in Europe, that increased the value back up to level one. Still going to see delays, but not as bad as uh, we potentially could have been seeing. Back on the Japanese, and you know, largely with where things are, their goal is to try to slow the U.S. at this point and get that negotiated peace. That's what the game is designed on. Um, and I don't think they want to expend a lot of effort trying to increase ground when really all they have to do is stop the Allies from moving forward seen a lot of activity on the cards without a lot of actual actions happening. Um, some real arrangement where the U.S. brought forces up into the Marshalls and the Japanese also rearranged their forces more towards Indochina out of Korea. Uh, both have their plans here. The U.S. launched an attack here on uh, Iniwitak and the, uh, the Japanese responded with a weather resp uh, reaction. There was a monsoon. They had this under their deck. They buried another card after that uh, in there for next turn. Then the U.S. launched another attack and actually managed to take it. So that means they're going to um, not lose the points, presumably, unless the Japanese can retake one of these two islands uh, for the marshals. Uh, well, for not gaining five name taxes. But what's the next target? That's gonna to be tough. There's nothing there's nothing that easy that jumps forward for next turn. It looks like next turn they actually have to take five locations rather than just one and getting five for free. Uh, and we still don't have a carrier on the board. <laughs> So we're going to be dropping down by one. It's going to be close. And the Japanese have some surprises in their hand. Well, we're coming down close to the end of the turn. Uh, everybody's, they're each a one card. And that's all they have. Their reserves, their passes have all been spent. The uh, only real effective action, other than maybe some repositionings, <laughs> see the Americans are pushing their forces further forward the position to threaten truck, for example. But the Japanese, uh, well, they did two things. One, they sent India into unrest using the Mahatma Gandhi uh, independence campaign card. This is going to cost a replacement step next turn, and ground replacements can't be used by the Commonwealth. Uh, they drove, uh, they destroyed the forces here at Rangoon and took them, but at cost, they lost... Uh, you know, two steps off their, off their core. And let's see what happens. It doesn't look like they're going to be... So, because of the inter-service rivalry, they're not really able to do anything to take the marshals back. And that's kind of a painful situation. And the Japanese last card is Tojo Resigns. Now, they didn't have to play this, but they want to because of its effect. Uh, it's a Japanese option. Reduce U.S. political will by two. Okay, that means the game's going to be over because the U.S. doesn't have a carrier, but... Uh, the Allied Manchurian Invasion cards prerogates have been met. Flip the game turn marker. And now, things... There are some events that are, are, are reliant on this. And then we're going to have a reshuffle the deck. push that. But this is the end of the game. I can tell you right now. The U.S. has gained 
the five areas. They don't lose a point from that. But they don't have a carrier. So boom, we go to negotiations and it's over. Uh, this is what the Japanese were playing for on this entire turn. Uh, actually, attacking in Burma was kind of a... Why am I doing this? Well, I want to see if I can do it. So, between that success, Tojo's resignation, some sort of agreement has come to, um, possibly allowing Japan to hold on to some of their empire, as it were. Uh, because, you know, the war in Europe's not going terribly well. The, uh, there was a recent victory, and things aren't going that well here either. Now, you could ask, well, is this even reasonable? I don't know. Uh, but it definitely brings some questions to mind that I'll bring up in my review. Um, largely about whether or not there's a, some unreasonable strategies available here. Now, I don't know, because obviously, I, one thing is I trust uh, Mark Herman in terms of designing games that usually don't have that kind of problem. In them. Uh, usually they're well, well designed games that maybe there are options that are not historically accurate, but anyway, I'll get to this in the review. Uh, but certainly for my uninformed play, and I'm not quite sure yet what the U.S. should have done, maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe they expended too much early. Maybe they shouldn't have tried to use cards. There's such a temptation to use cards that they got themselves into this weakened position where this could have happened. Uh, on the other hand, I am somewhat worried that there may be a very, very powerful but not historical uh, option to the Japanese, and one which makes this no longer feel like the Pacific War at all largely because it's detached you know from the European situation and forced into that that one game play question. Uh, I feel like I was starting to get an idea of how to run a turn not in terms of the mechanical aspects of the rules but in terms of ah uh, you know if I want this I have to set it up first and I have to play cards to do that I can't just expect to have my offensives ready. In a lot of cases you can, but uh, as I was getting into these islands with the uh, US at least, it was becoming a situation where it would take more than one card play to, to launch the offensive effectively. I have to get my planes into place and that's not necessarily easy. Leave some nice decisions in terms of the islands, uh, you know, which where you want to hit why, you know, what it's going to cost you, because even taking a, something just occupied by a plane like this wasn't necessarily cheap. It's easy for the land forces once it gets to them, but you still have that naval interception capability, etc. And I think it handles that very, very nicely. So uh, I, I definitely see this as something that I want to play again at some point, but I just don't feel like I can ever waste the time the piles to totally enjoy my games. I gotta stop buying. Alright.